This is Ms. Monson from Shady Brook, and this video is about using strip diagrams when solving multiplication and division problems. It's really helpful to make sure you're familiar with using strip diagrams for addition and subtraction before moving on to multiplication and division, so make sure you've already watched that video. A quick recap of strip diagrams. Strip diagrams help show what's happening in a problem. We can combine, separate, or compare different things. Combining and separating strip diagrams have a total bar and a part strip. Comparison strip diagrams have two different part strips because the items in a comparison problem aren't going together and have never been together. We're going to start with combining strip diagrams. If George has four boxes of shoes and every box has two shoes in it, we can use a strip diagram to show this and to find out how many shoes he has in all. After solving addition strip diagrams, most kids want to make a strip diagram with two parts, four boxes and two shoes. But we're not combining boxes and shoes, we're just combining shoes. The boxes are what the shoes are in. So we'll draw our four boxes and then put two shoes in each box. We can either add two plus two plus two plus two, or because our groups are equal, we can multiply four times two. Either way, we'll find out that George has eight shoes. Let's look at another combining problem. If Katie has four mini candy bar packs, and each pack has six candy bars, we can figure out how many candy bars she has. Remember, we're not combining packs and candy bars, we're just finding candy bars. The candy bars are in four packs, and each pack has six candy bars. Remember that our total bar will be as long as the parts strip. So now we can add six plus six plus six plus six, or because we have equal groups, we can multiply four times six. Both problems give us an answer of 24 candy bars. We can also separate using a strip diagram. So if there are 50 students in PE and they're being put on teams, and each team has five students, we can find out how many groups we can make with our 50 students. We're not looking for a total. Our total number of students is 50. There won't be any more. We're answering a question about the groups. So we'll separate the 50. Each is an important word because it tells us that our groups will be equal sizes. Sometimes kids think that each means multiply, but it doesn't. Each tells us that every group is equal. We don't know how many groups to make, but we do know the size of each group, five students. So we'll start with our total bar. And on a problem like this, I often have to redraw the bar to make sure everything is equal at the end. And then we'll start building our groups. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Once we've used all of the students, we can stop making groups and make sure our part strip equals our total bar. Sometimes, once I've started the strip diagram like this, I'll draw a question mark to show that the groups continue and I'm not sure how many there are. At this point, your child should realize that separating into equal groups means it will be dividing. She can then use a division strategy that's separate from strip diagrams to solve the problem. Strip diagrams aren't about finding answers, they're about visualizing a problem and choosing a strategy for solving it. In the end, we see that we can make 10 groups. Let's look at a slightly different separating problem. This time we have 18 cookies that are being shared by three kids. We want to know how many cookies each kid gets. Well, the kids won't get more than 18 cookies, so we're going to be separating them. 18 is our total. We're trying to figure out the size of our groups, but this time we know how many groups there are. Three. Each kid is a group because each kid is getting his or her own cookies. Do you notice that word each again? So I draw my three groups and put a question mark in each group because that's what I'm trying to find, the size of each group. At this point, I can move to a division-solving strategy to find my answer of six cookies. Now, our last type of strip diagrams is for comparison problems. These problems are ones where there's no total or parts. You have two or more things that have never been together and are not being put together now. A lot of comparison problems are solved using subtraction, like if there were 25 apples and 30 oranges, and we want to know how many more oranges there are. When we use multiplication and division, there's always a keyword to look for, times. If I have some books, you could have three times as many as me, or I could have four times as many as you. 
you would need to use multiplication or division to solve this problem because we're not just finding the difference between the two numbers. Let's look at an example. I bought two packages of pencils. One package has four pencils, and the other package has three times as many pencils. I want to know how many pencils are in the second package. I'm not combining the packages because I'm not looking for a total. I'm not separating the pencils because they're already separated. I can't compare four and three because that would leave me with one pencil in the second package, and that doesn't make sense when the problem says there are three times more in the second package. So I draw my two strips, one for package one and another for package two, and then I label package one. Three times means that package two has three groups, and every group is as big as package one. So I have three groups of four. I can add those fours or multiply them to get a total of 12 pencils. Here's another problem. Shane has $25, which is five times more money than his little brother William has. We want to find out how much money William has. We can't combine their money to find Williams. We can't separate because it's not together. So we have to compare it. Here's Shane's money, and here's William's. It says that Shane has more, and that Shane has $25. Shane's money is also five times William's, so we'll cut his strip into five pieces. William's strip is only the same size as one of those pieces. Since we're trying to find out about a group, and all of the groups are equal sizes, we can divide and find that William has $5. Strip diagrams help us show what's happening in a problem and can help us decide what operation to use to solve it. For multiplication and division strip diagrams, the key is going to be equal groups. And you want to be aware of the words each and times. This is Ms. Monson, and this video is about multiplication and division strip diagrams.